Welcome to the Online Prosperity Show. My name is Kyle Murcher. I'm a public speaking coach, champion, and author. And today we're going to dive in deep into the fundamentals of great public speaking so that for your next presentation, you can truly own the stage. Let's get started. Welcome to yet another exciting episode of the Online Prosperity Show. I'm your host, Prosper Tarominga, and today we have a remarkable guest who has conquered his own fears and is now helping countless others do the same. Kyle, how are you doing, my man? I'm doing great, Prosper. It's fantastic to be here in Oz, all the way from Scotland. And uh, yeah, looking forward to sharing a bit of value with your audience today regarding public speaking and Fantastic. Well, I was just thinking Scotland and Australia worlds apart, but uh, I enjoy your whiskey. So, you know, it's something <laughs> that far away. <laughs> Absolutely. And for those that are watching right now, get ready to embark on an inspiring journey as we dive into the world of presentations, confidence, and transformation. Um, Kyle is a presentation skills trainer who knows firsthand the power of finding one's voice. Now, Carl, before I lose my own voice trying to <laughs> you and your accolades, it's a pleasure to have you here. Can you tell us a little bit about yourself and um, your journey into the world of presentation uh, skills training? Yeah, absolutely. The reason I, I got into presentation skills was because I was terrible at it. Uh, my, my first ever presentation was an impromptu presentation and we were sort of doing a, an icebreaker session and the idea was everyone would be asked a question and then they'd have to stand up for two minutes and, and give an answer uh, to that question. And, and my question was, Kyle, if a zombie apocalypse happened in Scotland, where would you go? Um, so I, I get up there, you know, the heart's going like this, I'm starting to sweat in places I didn't know I could, um, <laughs> I'm feeling uncomfortable, all the eyes are looking at me, and I say two words, Prosper, the pub. And uh, that was my entry into the world of presenting, and I sat back down and I felt, I felt so ashamed, I really did, because I, I let the pressure of that moment get to me so much that I just crumbled in front of all of those people. And I never wanted to feel like that again. It's a horrible feeling. I don't know if you've ever struggled with speaking yourself, Prosper, but when that happens, it's not good. And so in that moment, I felt like I kind of had to make a decision. It was kind of like the, the, the moment in the Matrix movie, you know, where Neil gets the blue pill or the red pill. I had to make the decision whether I was gonna hide from this um, idea of presenting and always be kind of shy and fearful of speaking up or try and get better at it. I'm sure you figured out I chose the latter and that's what got me moving on my my journey um, into presentation skills and I just started doing something every single day to get a little bit better at it and seven years on here we are. Fantastic and it's, it's quite intriguing I mean, I wouldn't fault you for choosing the pub. I mean, any well-to-do <laughs> knowing person or man or guy at your age would have thought, I'll go to the pub and maybe yeah. what everybody else was um, doing. What was happening in your life at that time, you know, uh, uh, you know, for you to maybe come up with an answer like the pub? Yeah, I was a student. I was studying um, psychology. I was in my penultimate year um, and I had no clue what I wanted to do with my life. And that was one of the reasons I was in that room. I was just trying a bunch of different things. And I saw a, a poster in my university saying that there's a place where you can practice speaking. I went along and uh, yeah, that's where I had that experience there so yeah that's probably why because i spent most of my time in the pub that's probably why i said that because <laughs> <laughs> we normally just uh you know resonate to the things that we spend things doing or the friends that we um you know spend most of our time with so maybe that yeah. could have been a, a, a clue right there no i think so <laughs> you then went on from being a shy introvert to a very confident speaker. I mean, speaking to you right now and prior, I don't think you're shy at all. You exude mm -hmm. the confidence and you know your way 
you know, around speaking. And it's quite incredible to witness all of this sort of transformation. Now, could you maybe tell us uh, more about how public speaking has helped you overcome your shyness um, and being an introvert? Yeah, it's given me everything. Because when you get become, you know, proficient and confident at, at public speaking, speaking in front of, say, 100 people, all other speaking becomes easier, whether that be interviews, having a conversation with a colleague, small group meetings, networking, dating, all of it becomes easier because public speaking is one of the scariest forms of speaking communication you can do. Maybe stand up comedy is a little bit above it, but it's right up there at the top, you know? So by becoming comfortable in that very uncomfortable environment for most, it gave me so much more, cons more confidence in other aspects of my life. And this is what I love about my training as well, because people think I'm just helping them present well to an audience. I'm helping you present well to anyone you speak to because all the skills really just filter down. You know, we can't distinguish between speaking to an audience and speaking one-to-one. -one. The, the gestures, the body language, the way you use your voice, the words that you choose, they all filter into normal day conversations as well. And this is why I think it's an underutilized school that we, a skill that we could be using more in schools and universities in the workplace to promote more confidence within people. Fantastic. I like how you say it's not, there's no difference when you're speaking to somebody, you know, in front of you and speaking to an audience because of your mannerisms and everything else that comes along yeah. with it. Now, <clears throat> when you are teaching people these presentation skills, who do you normally um, want to work with? I mean, I mean, your journey is inspiring because you made the you made yourself so to speak but who are the yeah. individuals or the groups that you primarily work with um you know through your presentation skills uh, training uh -huh. well a lot of the work i do now is in in the corporate world so i'll work with sales teams finance teams and um, managers directors because they have to present on a on a regular basis but i also work with people who are perhaps what i like to call selling the invisible you know, uh, individuals who have to articulate what they do to get across to their prospect. So that could be your coaches, your consultants, your service providers. But it's really people who have a keen desire to improve. That's the most important trait in the people I work with. Because if you do not want to get better at this, I simply cannot help you. Right? I can give you the tools, but I can't, I can't be the one pushing you the whole way. You've got to push yourself. And so that is what I would say is, is absolutely key to this, Prosper. And the cool thing is, if you do have that motivation, you can get good very quickly. Because all you need to know is how to present effectively. And then secondly, you need opportunities to practice and get feedback. And if you do both of those on a regular basis, that's what I did, you're going to pro uh, progress very, very quickly. Um, and especially because the bar is so low for presentations. Um, I'm sure you've seen some prosper and networking events, maybe you work. They're not that great, are they? So if you're just a little bit better than most, you stand out so much more at work or in your business or whatever it may be. Oh, absolutely. And um, I think the statements that say the squeakiest will gets the grease. So if you are in a place where you are articulate and you can speak well, then obviously people would either vote for you, buy from you, or yeah. want to engage with you um, with, with what you're doing. Now, yeah. you've mm -hmm. gotten so good at this public speaking that you've even written a book about it. You've written the five pillars of effective public speaking. Could you maybe... Um, walk us through and share your insights of these uh, five pillars with our audience. Yeah, absolutely. There's some subtle advertisement in my background uh, for the book there. Uh, the five pillars of effective public speaking is what I believe are the foundations of great public speaking. So I'll run through what all five are. And uh, the first one is body language. So how you use your nonverbal communication. I'm talking about your posture, your eye contact, your facial expression how you use your gestures, right? All of these things have a huge impact on how engaging you are as a speaker. Second pillar is how you use your voice. 
So I think we've all been in that situation where we've heard a monotone speaker. The person who speaks like this all the way through, and you end up wanting to switch off the podcast because it's not very fun for anyone at all. So that chapter of the book shows you how to avoid being monotone for varying your volume, your speed, your tone, the feeling of your voice. This is a critical skill for holding attention in any conversation. And then thirdly, something which is overlooked a lot is structure. So actually how to put a presentation together so that it flows all the way through. And there's not maybe five different messages. There's only one message, one clear point for the audience to take home. Uh, fourth is clarity. So making sure that your ideas are actually understood. If you confuse the audience, you're going to lose the audience. And then fifth, most important of all, impact. How you can make a lasting impression that inspires action. That's how I define impact. That's what the book, the book teaches you to do when you're delivering a presentation. I like this. And thank you so much for sharing this because <clears throat> they say a great percentage of what we say is unspoken through your body, mm. right? Yeah. And um, obviously, once you then convey that message with your body, your voice then makes it easy for people to... Um, you know, follow through and hear most of what you're saying. But if you are yeah. not structuring your uh, speech, it will be difficult because if you start with the beginning and then you put the climax and then you put, um, you know, another part there and then the end starts all over again and you're trying to explain to people before you have concluded the thing that you want yeah. to say to them and have everything in some sort of, order but then you put a full stop and uh, anyway i was not putting any you're me a sore head just talking about it yeah <laughs> yeah and, and that's the thing a lot of people's presentations i, I mean I'm, I'm not sorry to say it, are a mess they're all over the place right there's there's no easy path for the audience to follow and when we make it hard for our audience whether that be in terms of holding our attention or making our information very complex or very dense or hard to follow they switch off you know the attention span is so small we've really got to earn our audience's attention every second of our presentation it's so important Absolutely. <clears throat> and apparently the goldfish are winning in this competition now, right? Oh, they, yeah. can least, <laughs> they can at least hold three seconds and, and we can't even. Oh, man. Yeah, yeah, the goldfish are doing well. I, I imagine the ones in Australia are even more switched on over there with all the predators. <laughs> it, must, it, must be the, it must be the Great Barrier Reef or running away from sharks. Because you got to pay yeah. attention. When... Yeah, I mean, I've seen Finding Nemo. I know what goes on. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. Now, um, Kyle, there's um, obviously, how can people get a hold of this book or start working with you? Yeah, yeah. So the book's on Amazon Prosper. Um, so if you go onto Amazon, type in the five pillars of effective public speaking, it'll come up. I, I think you've probably got an Amazon for Australia, if, if that's where your audience are. But anywhere you are in the world. And you can pick it up from there. And in terms of reaching out to me, um, my, my website is um, confidencebydesign.co.uk. The reason for that, I believe speaking is a tool where you can create your confidence, i.e. creating it by design. Um, so you can reach out to me there or just on LinkedIn, Kyle Murter. Um, M-U-R-T-A-G-H is how you spell the last name. There's not too many of us out there. I'm sure you'll be able to find me if you search fantastic i'll definitely make sure that all those links are in the show notes uh so that our audience can <clears throat> obviously get in touch with you there all right now while i was looking you up i actually discovered that you went to the european championships of public speaking i did not know there was something like that i just thought um, you know, you could speak at a local Toastmasters or maybe a TED talk that's like the highest pinnacle. Or maybe if you become the prime minister, then maybe <laughs> you've got a bigger stage. Now, becoming a champion is no yeah. bull feat. And um, what then motivated this shy, introverted Kyle to achieve this prestigious title of, um, you know, uh, European champion of public speaking in 2021? 
were there yeah. people in the audience to start off with because that was during covid and um, no there wasn't it was all virtual unfortunately back then so to answer your question there's a competition called the the world championship of public speaking toastmasters run it it's the biggest contest in public speaking Thirty thousand people compete every year there's been a few australian champions actually um, and it's something i very much enjoy uh, competing in um, i am quite a competitive person and more importantly competing challenging yourself against others i believe is one of the fastest ways to improve so that's been one of my little secrets for getting very good very quickly is competing in this contest and so yes in 2021 i won the european championship i went on to the world semi-finals unfortunately lost there um, in the last 28 in the world and uh, this year i won the, the uk and ireland championship but unfortunately didn't make it through the, the european finals this year but i'm still going and the world championship will happen and um, hopefully next year prosper that's the the plan anyway i just think it's a great way to, to challenge yourself and I, I learned so much from competing in that competition because what it really is prosper is a storytelling competition in many ways and um, everybody's telling a story in there so you learn lots from watching others and from experiencing it yourself as well fantastic and <clears throat> now that you've put it into context because everything is a story you know whatever yeah. you, your, your marketing is a story you tell yeah. your kids to go to bed is a story everything revolves around story telling and um yeah. is this what you then offer in your training um you know um which proceeds uh which goes beyond public speaking what what else are people learning from you yeah yeah so i mean storytelling is a huge part of public speaking uh, a lot of the times when the content of a presentation is poor it's because there's an absence of a personal story there's not a story in that presentation which allows you to connect with that speaker and when you don't connect with the speaker emotionally or for an experience of some kind you listen less to that speaker and therefore you don't take action on his or her words so having a story is so so important um, in presentations the first question you asked me in this interview was how i got started how many times as business owners do we get asked that question in networking events and in other environments? You've got to have a story in response to that. You can't just say, oh, I kind of fell into it. You know, you can't really connect with that, right? But by me talking about me struggling a little bit with the, that first question, the feelings I had of, of shame, you can connect more with that. Um, and that's the, the power of, of telling a good story. You really... Because there's levels of engagement, Ross, right? There's, an, there's a level of engagement where, yeah, you're listening to me. This is fantastic and great. But there's another level where you're actually thinking about what I've said in relation to your life. And that's a much higher level of engagement, right? That's where people are really taking in your content and thinking, okay, how can I apply this? How, how does this relate to me? That is the highest level of engagement you can strive for. And that's what story can help you do. Oh, you might, you might've been saying that, but I was just thinking about what I had for lunch, but anyway. <laughs> there we go, I failed. <laughs> I hear you, man, I hear you, man. And, and I can see the passion that you have in making sure that you can actually start helping others be, do and have. Um, you know, this this whole storytelling and eventually a happy existence. Now, I, I want to know what, what actually is driving your mission to help others overcome their fears? I know you said earlier on that you never want to go through what you went through the day yeah. you remembered to go to the pub. But your dedication <laughs> now is truly commendable. You know, what, what is it that is fueling your mission to guide others on their own journey to conquer that that fear and also unleash their speaking potential, even though they're caught up in their head and finding out what story is happening while you're telling that story yourself? Yeah, yeah, I, I think there's two parts to that. Um, first part is I absolutely love this, you know, it, it's 
if I could do this for free, I would, you know? Um, I, that doesn't mean I'm not gonna charge, by the way, but you know, that, that's where I'm at with it. I, I love doing this every day. I'm, I'm so grateful for this coming into my life and now being my life. So that's the first part of it. And the second part of it is I know how much more people can achieve if they have this skill. Because I've been there. I've been that shy, timid, introverted individual who would ever, barely ever speak up for themselves at all. And I know other people have the potential to be so much more if they could learn how to communicate. They could be better parents. They could be better um, colleagues. They could be better leaders. And ultimately, that's going to help the world in its own little way be a little bit better. So those are the two sort of driving factors for, for me, Prosper. I love it. I also love seeing other people reach their next level too. Fantastic. Now, Kyle, I want to take you back to the time when you were a student and you were asked about the zombie a cop, um, apocalypse. Yeah. Apocalypse. All right. The zombie apocalypse. All right. At, at that time. Um, and you were standing there. I think you would have heard this song before. Your palms were sweaty and, you, you know, your knees were... Yeah, um, was that one of your songs, Prosper? Did you bring that out in the early 2000s? Is that right? <laughs> <laughs> you know, your palms were sweaty, yeah, you know, me, <laughs> and you're thinking of mom's spaghetti while you're in there, but the only two words that came out were the pub. Now, yeah. what would you tell the pub, Kylie, right now, knowing what you know now? What would you tell that lad? Um, oh, I think I'd just tell him to, to keep on going, to keep on coming back. Because, yeah, it was two words today, but it'll be three words tomorrow, five words the next day. And before you know it, you'll get two sentences out, big man. And that's the key. Just small incremental improvements every day. And the confidence does come quickly once you stay in that situation. Because what happens... Um, and what I see is people have that horrible experience and then they never want to go near it again, right? They will avoid it for the rest of your life. And the longer you avoid it, the bigger it becomes in your mind as a problem. And then it's even harder to overcome. So as soon as you feel that fear of speaking, I think you've got to, you've got to attack it head on um, because that is the, the path to overcoming it and, and finding your confidence and not throwing up mom's spaghetti. <laughs> oh, I, I'm I'm just enjoy, enjoying the passion and the confidence <laughs> you're exuding uh, in this conversation here, Kylie. Now, you know what? You've come from that pub, lad, and you've gone on and won the European Championship of Public Speaking. What are your future aspirations in the world of public speaking? I mean, your, your your dreams are really captivating. Could you maybe share with us your future goals, uh, including maybe your aspirations to impact a larger audience or on the big yeah. stage? Where else can we see you in the future? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So I, my first stop is I definitely want to become the, the world champion of public speaking. That's a, a very immediate goal for me. Um, I also want to, to grow my business to a place where I'm able to reach more people and do sort of speaking tours around the world. And that would be absolutely fantastic, being able to maybe even come to Melbourne um, and see me in person prosper. We can do it like that next time. Um, and long, long term, you know, in about sort of 20, 20 years, I'm looking to get into politics. And I, I think I could, uh, I think I could do a little bit of good here in Scotland, being the the first minister of something like that. And um, so that's the sort of long term ambition. Fantastic. I have my to pop. <laughs> <laughs> hey man, if if ever that happens, you definitely have my vote. And I think everybody that's watching this show right now will definitely be in the ballot box just remembering that guy um, who only spoke two sentences, but now is out there changing the world, um, you know, one word at a time. Now, thank you so much for the time that you've spent with us on the show today, especially sharing your our inspiring journey 
um, you know, on the online prosperity show. I mean, your transformation from being naturally introverted individual to now this confident public uh, persona and trainer, so to speak, and even author is nothing short of remarkable. Thank you so much, um, you know, for keeping it up and really showing us what is possible, Kyle. Well, thank you for having me, Prosper. Thanks for giving me the opportunity to, to share the message. And uh, yeah, if anyone's out there and they're thinking or they're struggling with presenting, the key thing is go out there, find opportunities to speak, look online, try and learn a little bit about it. And if you keep doing that on a regular basis, you're going to overcome that fear. You're going to feel more confident and it will help improve your life. Absolutely. I mean, practice does make perfect. So the more you are speaking, uh, the more you actually find your own voice and you step inside of your own self. And if you're ready to conquer your speaking nerves, engage your audience and win more sales, I think Carl is the mentor that you've been looking for. Remember, the journey to prosperity starts with you finding your own confidence. All right, so don't miss out on an opportunity to connect with Carl before he gets famous and um, take your speaking skills to new heights. Just click the buttons in the show notes below and uh, let that transformation begin. Until next time, this has been Prosper and Kyle. We're signing off right now, but I want to remind you that your path to online prosperity just starts with two words, just like Kyle did. And um, look where it has taken him. Bye for now.